पद्मश्री डॉक्टर राजेंद्र ए पडवे कैंसर सर्जरी के क्षेत्र में एक जाना माना नाम मुंबई स्थित टाटा मेमोरियल सेंटर के डायरेक्टर और सर्जिकल ऑंकोलॉजी डिवीजन के प्रमुख डॉक्टर पडवे ने कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट को एक नई दिशा दी है कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट में विशेष योगदान के लिए उन्हें देश ही नहीं विदेशों में भी कई सम्मानित अवार्ड से नवाजा जा चुका है Breast cancer is on the rise in cities, in mid-sized towns in India, and this rising cancer is because of our changes in lifestyle. There are two or three very very important causes that contribute to rising breast cancer. The first and the foremost is delayed first pregnancy. Longer the time interval between beginning of menstrual cycle in a in a in a lady to the first full term pregnancy, greater is the risk of breast cancer. To give an example, the average age at which the first pregnancy took place about forty years ago was about twenty to twenty five. Today it is between twenty seven and twenty eight, and in the United States it's about thirty two. and the incidence of cancer in villages where the first pregnancy is still at 20 20 22 or so is barely about 8 per 100000 the same number in cities is about 30 per 100000 and the same number in united states is about 120 per 100000 so having first child between the age of about 23 to 26 is ideal The second important correctable cause is breastfeeding. Breastfeeding the child for at least about an year is another important contribution to preventing breast cancer. And the third which is also preventable and important cause is obesity. Obesity after the age of menopause is an important contributor to rising breast cancer. obesity not only increases breast cancer but it also increases uterine body cancer it increases ovarian cancer it increases kidney cancer it contributes to colon cancer it contributes to the lower end of the food pipe cancer so large number of cancers are related to obesity and obesity is also related to diabetes and blood pressure so sab dukho ki ek dawa वजन कम करो ब्रेस्ट कैंसर मोस्ट कॉमनली प्रेजेंट्स विथ पेनलेस लंप लंप इन ब्रेस्ट दैट इज पेनलेस एनी वेयर बिटवीन द एज ऑफ थर्टी फाइव टू सेवेंटी फाइव एंड एनी एनी एज बियॉन्ड इंडिकेट्स कैंसर एंड as the age advances as we go beyond 50 the possibility of cancer is very high whereas between 35 and 45 it would be there but it is not as high as it would be when a lady comes to me with a lump in breast that is painless at age 55 the other symptoms which are also sometimes um lead i mean lead us to think of cancer is uh, blood stain discharge through nipple but this is not a very common cause at all common symptom at all pain in breast or pain in the arm is very very rarely a symptom of breast cancer so 95% of the women present to us with lump in breast i would say that for a lady who is postmenopausal but not in premenopausal women so younger women there can be many other causes like cyst fibroid noma a fibroid uh, and sometimes the interaction between changing menstrual cycle and breast all these can produce lumps but they are of no significance and they don't indicate any cancerous affliction at all breast cancer first of all is immensely curable so when i say 80% cure rate in stage 1 i am saying 80% chances that the woman will live up to her age of 80 so excellent cure rates 
the treatment for breast cancer essentially is a combination of surgery, radiation therapy and chemotherapy and sometimes hormonal therapy. Now, surgery today in early breast cancer does not mandate removal of breast. 70% of women coming to Tata Memorial Hospital for early breast cancer do not lose their breast as part of their surgery. What I do and what is also the standard of care is removal of the lump and removal of the glands in the armpit. That's all that is necessary surgically in this woman. By virtue of saving of breast, it would be mandatory that the lady has radiation. The need for chemotherapy, hormone therapy and the newer targeted therapies is based on sensitivity of the tumor to each of these modalities. So, after surgery, when about 8 to 10 days have passed by, when I get the final report, there are two facts that come to me. The first one, how much is the risk that the cancer can come back? And second, what is the sensitivity of this tumor? So, marrying these two information that I get, it is decided that if I were to give chemotherapy, how much of this risk will come down? Or if I were to give hormone therapy, how much of this risk will come down? And based on that, a doctor takes a call whether a lady needs chemotherapy, hormone therapy or targeted therapy. Mammography is a useful tool in women above the age of 50. It is a useless investigation below the age of 50 for early detection of cancer. So this should be driven home and importantly remembered that mammography is not effective below the age of 50 when a woman has regular menstrual periods. This has been an extremely effective modality outside of this country, especially in the United States and the reason being that almost 60% of their population is above the age of 50. Whereas in India, 85% of the population is below the age of 50. So, an investigation which is effective above the age of 50 will not be useful in India. No country in any part of the world offers screening with mammography below the age of 50 because it is ineffective. In fact, it can miss cancer and push a woman into procrastination and quietude. Rarely, for every 100 women getting breast cancer, one man gets breast cancer. And again, it is strongly related to obesity. Absolutely. The answer to that question is woman can come back to normal life. Now, in what all places can she come back to normal life? If I operate on a lady today, the lady goes home tomorrow and tomorrow she can drive home herself. That much of normalcy the very next day. In a span of a month, she can play tennis. And once the chemotherapy, radiotherapy, everything gets over in a span of about eight months or so, the life can be normal with breast conservation. So it's not just quantity of life, but even the quality of life is absolutely normal. The quantity is entirely based on the stage at which a woman is diagnosed. And if she is diagnosed in stage one, we're talking about 80% chances of living up to 80. Cancer in India is low, as I had mentioned earlier, and we can lower it further. 70% of cancer in India is preventable. If we were to stop tobacco, tobacco in any form will reduce at least about 10 different cancers in various parts of the body. It will reduce hypertension also. The second, personal hygiene. Personal hygiene for men will stop transmission of viruses that can produce cervical cancer, that can produce and induce sexually transmitted diseases and penile cancer in men. Cervical cancer in women is prevented by personal hygiene in men, which can be achieved 
by cleanliness, by using condom, by using uh, having circumcision very very earlier on life. And all these three can reduce cervical cancer to a great extent. And lastly, obesity. We need to tackle obesity and this is a problem in cities of India, in mid-sized towns of India. We eat a lot, we don't exercise. We need to do something to maintain ourselves at an optimum weight and that can be done by physically doing lots of things, maybe exercise, maybe walking. And I would say if you are walking for any work within a kilometer, please walk. Like, share, subscribe for more such informative videos.